Hello friends, this is Jivesh. I welcome you back to my channel Bio Professional. Here in this lecture, we are going to see how blood glucose level is maintained. We know that blood glucose level is maintained by two hormone known as glucagon and insulin. Okay, so today we will discuss only about the glucagon. So if you are watching this video for very first time, I recommend you to subscribe to my channel, share this channel link with your friends, colleagues or relatives or whom you know as a biologist so that we can grow together. This channel can be grown together and we can learn so many new things on a regular basis and we can do higher studies. So let's now start today's lecture. So today we will specifically you know, see how glucagon take action on blood sugar level. See we cannot allow the sugar level in our blood to increase or decrease. We have to maintain the blood sugar level in a very you know, narrow range. So what's the requirement? What will happen if your blood glucose level you know, will be very high or low? What will happen? See. If your blood glucose level, you know, for a longer period of time, it's not maintained, then your all the physiological process that is going on will eventually stop functioning and it will not function properly. Like you can have a kidney problem, lungs problem, heart problem, right? You can lose the vision. So many, you know, uh, difficulties you will find that you see diabetes patient. So. We will see that how this glucagon take action on blood sugar level. Every cell type in your body uptake glucose because this glucose when cell uptake, this glucose undergo, undergoes for the process of oxidation, right? So oxidation after that we all know the process of glycolysis, TCA cycle and then after that you know carbon dioxide will be produced as a byproduct we all know this and ATP ATP is the main source of energy right so now question is that the glucagon how it take action so before that you need to understand two important term one is called as hyperglycemia hyperglycemia okay and hypoglycemia hypo glycemia so these are the two condition you have to understand hyperglycemia hyper means more okay and glycemia means concentration of glucose in blood okay so hyperglycemia is a condition when the level of you know sugar in your blood is increased that means blood sugar level will be increased and hypoglycemia means hypo means less glycemia means concentration of glucose in your blood so if the you know blood glucose level is low we call it as hypo hypoglycemia so there are two conditions now if i ask you one question that in which category you will please you know two hormone we know that we have two hormone one is called glucagon it is already written over there and we have insulin right there are two hormone glucagon and insulin so in which category you will place these two hormones so what do you think when glucagon comes into action see glucagon when the blood sugar level is low let's say normal range of blood sugar level is like 70 mg to let's say 90 mg okay per 100 ml so this is the normal range that you know the blood sugar level to be maintained Okay, if the level is let's say it is very very it is less than or you can say it's very less than 70 mg per 100 ml. Okay, if this range, if you are you know less than 70 mg, then glucagon will come into play. Okay, glucagon will you know give the information. We will see how it gives the information and ultimately the blood glucose level will be maintained. So basically what I want to say is that when the blood sugar level is low then glucagon will come into play. So which, in which category you will place the glucagon? So we say that gl glucagon is a hyperglycemic. Hyperglycemic that means when the blood glucose level is low glucagon helps to increase the blood glucose level. So what's the function? What's the function of glucagon? Glucagon function as increase the blood glucose level so that 
we call it as glucagon is a you know hyperglycemic hyperglycemic that means it will allow the blood glucose level to increase and what about insulin when insulin comes into play when the blood glucose level is very high then insulin comes into play let's say blood glucose level is 130 or 100 you know 40 mg per ml then insulin will come and it will just you know minimize the blood glucose level so it, it it will maintain the blood glucose level so insulin is basically hypoglycemic we can say insulin is hypoglycemic fine now question is that how glucagon is released now we have seen that glucagon will come into play when the blood sugar level is low then who is gonna you know recognize okay that the blood glucose level is low so this is done by pancreas this is done by whom this is done by pancreas right so pancreas has got alpha cells right so this alpha cell sends it sends it sends the low blood glucose level low blood glucose level okay low blood glucose level when there is low blood glucose level let's say 70 less than 70 mg per deciliter that means per 100 ml then the alpha cell recognizes senses the low blood glucose level and it will release glucagon so glucagon is a hormone we all know this okay so we will not you know talk about insulin we will talk separately and insulin is released by you know the beta cells of pancreas so when the blood glucose level is high then insulin will you know come into play so for now we know that when glucagon will come glucagon will only come when the blood sugar level is less and this is sensed by alpha cells of pancreas and then glucagon will come in the system so we will now see that when the glucagon will be there then how it take action right how the blood glucose level will be increased okay so that process we'll see now so please stay tuned and watch the complete lecture so that you gain confidence okay whatever maybe the interlinked question or whatever question you will get in the exam you will definitely you know solve without any doubt so please stay tuned and watch the complete lecture so now glucagon is a hormone right is a hormone we have seen that in case of you know g protein signaling one of the ligand was glucagon so glucagon glucagon we can say that it is a ligand right ligand what is ligand i have already mentioned in your previous lecture that ligand is basically the primary messenger it carries some information so in in that case what it carries it carries that oh your blood glucose level is low you need to increase the blood glucose level that is the information the glucagon will give so now question is that if it is ligand okay so there must be some receptor so we will have to find now where is the receptor because when there is ligand there must be some receptor because the glucagon will not take action in every cell it will take action only in those cell types where it it have the receptor for it so in our body we have glucagon receptor in hepatocytes and adipose tissue okay so we will take the case of hepatocyte let's say this is you know the hepatocyte okay so this is hepatocyte hepatocyte means this is liver cell okay so hepatocyte has got a receptor for you know glucagon so receptor is basically gpcr let's say this is you know gpcr we know the you know secondary structure like this is you know gpcr so let's say glucagon comes and binds to this you know extracellular domain okay this is known as the ligand binding site so what will happen so glucagon is now present okay and now the ligand receptor complex we have already studied all these you know generalized part i am not going to discuss the you know detailed part because i have already mentioned it so if you have not watched the previous lecture then please go and watch the previous lecture and of course you will automatically understand this part so when the ligand will come and bind to this there will be ligand receptor you know 
and the conformational change first ligand like receptor con con complex will be formed and then there will be conformational change and we all know this like uh, there will be you know l3 loop of this receptor will interact to the you know g uh, g protein and then g alpha will be separated and then uh, it will interact with some membrane bound protein okay membrane bound enzyme so i am just <coughs> in a very short span i am writing it here this is membrane bound enzyme and in that case it has it is what adenylyl cyclase adenylyl <coughs> cyclase so you have you know g alpha and g alpha will interact with this and ultimately the adenylyl cyclase will activate so adenylyl cyclase cyclase what it will produce it will produce what it it will produce cyclic amp from atp so now we have cyclic amp then cyclic amp activates pka this is protein kinase okay this is one kinase it has capability for the phosphorylation we have all seen this part this is serine threonine kinase okay so it will take action on you know serine and threonine residues it will phosphorylate so now we we'll have to see what it will phosphorylate okay so protein kinase a it will first phosphorylate one particular you know enzyme known as known as phosphorylase kinase phosphorylase phosphorylase kinase okay <coughs> so phosphorylase kinase when when this you know pka protein kinase a will phosphorylate this you know enzyme it will become activated okay now we need to you know what we need here actually we need to increase the blood glucose level because the glucagon giving the same message that we need to increase the blood glucose level so here we are you know seeing the process so phosphorylase kinase will in turn activate another protein another enzyme it is known as glycogen glycogen phosphorylase glycogen phosphorylase b okay so this pka will phosphorylate another protein okay the name of the pro the name of the protein is let me just take the pen the name of the protein is you know glycogen synthase glycogen synthase okay so glycogen synthase is another enzyme which is present in the hepatocyte itself so pka will phosphorylate pka will phosphorylate this you know enzyme also on phosphorylation the glycogen synthase become inactive okay glycogen synthase become inactive and how a protein or you can say an enzyme on phosphorylation becomes active or inactive this is a separate topic i'll discuss in one lecture because when a phosphate group you know binds to the active site the conformational changes occurs and that enzyme is it becomes non functional okay so when this pka phosphorylate this glycogen synthase it becomes inactive so glycogen synthase as its name indicate it will synthesize glycogen we know that when the blood glucose level is high the gly the glucose you know glucose is converted to glycogen and it is you know stored in our body in case of you know hepatocyte the glycogen is stored in hepatocyte so what pk did pk just phosphorylate the glycogen synthase and and it become inactive fine now and pka also phosphorylate phosphorylase kinase and it become active so we can write here it becomes active here fine so this phosphorylase kinase again phosphorylates another enzyme known as glycogen phosphorylase b so on phosphorylation so it will also be phosphorylated so it will become active now this glycogen synthase again you know phosphorylates another enzyme known as glycogen glycogen phosphorylase glycogen phosphorylase a okay this is another this is another enzyme so it is it's on phosphorylation it becomes active now it will take action on glycogen it will take action on glycogen okay 
and then glycogen will break down into glucose okay so the process of breakdown of glycogen into glucose is known as glycogenolysis so the name itself indicates glycogenolysis glycogenolysis lysis means breakdown the process is known as glycogenolysis and then the glucose is now present okay and then the blood glucose level will increase so all this process is occurring on hepatocyte that is a liver cell fine so liver cell has got both enzyme the enzyme for the synthesis of glycogen as well as enzyme for the synthesis breakdown of glycogen so when glucagon binds to its receptor it will activate ultimately the glycogen phosphorylase is a and which will directly take action on glycogen okay and through the process of glycogenolysis the glucose will be formed okay and ultimately the blood glucose level will increase so i think now you got some idea that how the blood glucose level is increased okay so likewise if the blood glucose level is very high then we need to decrease the blood glucose level here then the the action of insulin comes so the receptor for insulin is also present in the hepatocyte but the insulin receptor is not gpc here we will see what is the receptor of insulin so this is different case so and then we will see that you know there will be the formation of glycogen and and in that case the glycogen synthesis will become active okay uh, so we will see in the you know subsequent lecture so in the in the next lecture what we will uh, discuss is that the termination process let's say this is glucagon okay and when the blood glucose level is you know low the glucagon will come and bind to the receptor and it will increase the blood glucose level so just imagine a case the glucagon is continuously releasing and it is now you know giving the glucose in the blood and it is not controlled so what will happen so eventually the all the you know blood glucose level will be very high so we need to stop the signal so this is very very important we need to control the signaling mechanism we we cannot allow the you know glucagon to continuously synthesize and ultimately the blood glucose level is very high so we will see in the next lecture the termination process there are many different ways the cell terminate the gpcr or the g protein signaling pathway so hope you will like the video so please i am again asking one help that please if you like my video if you like my way of teaching then please do subscribe to my channel share this channel link with your friends so that we can grow together thank you for watching this lecture